Las Vegas. It's the kind of place where few things provoke surprise anymore. But beneath the flashing lights, there's an even darker side of Sin City. We're about to descend into a secret world, a city beneath a city. Yeah, this gives you kind of a good idea of the tunnels and where they go and uh, what's above them. I mean, these four tunnels here, which are about eight feet wide. And Matthew O'Brien has agreed to lead us here. through a labyrinth of tunnels here that stretch for miles. It goes under New York, New York. It goes under MGM Grand, one of the biggest hotels in the world. It goes about two and a half miles total to the Hard Rock, and it opens up at that point. But uh, So there's a whole world essentially existing beneath the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, exactly. Yeah, there's hundreds of people who live in these underground flood channels. What's up, Iron? How you doing, man? People like Iron, a tunnel regular who Matt met while researching his book, Beneath the Neon, about people living in the tunnels. Can we get a tour of your camp, just a quick tour? So um, Iron is going to show us his home under the tunnels. Ain't much. That's it right there. That's just basically a blanket and some pillows right now because everything I had got washed away. So this is where you live? Yeah. Right here. This is my little, kind of like a little wall. It's kind of dirty. I wouldn't expect to come. The tunnels may provide the city's homeless an escape from Vegas's scorching heat, but they were originally built to protect this desert city from flash floods. They're um, separate from the sewage system, as you can see, even though it does kind of smell like a sewer yeah. in this one. It's strictly for flood control, so when it rains, these tunnels fill up really, really quickly. It can fill up a foot per minute with flood waters. They can be extremely dangerous. So I would imagine that people's homes get washed away within minutes or seconds. Yeah, a lot of them are really good about communicating with each other when it's about to rain and grab their valuables and get out and leave everything else behind. And as we can feel, it's a lot cooler than outside too. That's part of the attraction for, for people to live. We followed Matt deeper into the tunnels and found a dark underworld. Yeah, I've been exploring these tunnels for more than seven years. You still have a bit of an anxiety going into the tunnels because you never know what to expect and you never know what's waiting in the dark. By the way, the only reason we can see right now is because of our flashlights and the light from the camera because otherwise it's pitch black in here. By now, we're about a half a mile into a tunnel that runs just beneath Caesar's Palace, a major landmark on the Strip. It's eerily quiet, even though thousands of people are on the street above us. This is uh, kind of a, a garbage area and a bathroom. You can see the stains on the wall and the tissue on the ground and stuff. So we'll go through here and go up this side tunnel and see if we can see if anyone's around. Wow, this is wild. It's not long before someone hears us. Steve, oh good. What's going on? It's about to come find you. So we'll so just we'll follow, follow you, Steve. Steve okay. Yeah. Steve, you're not using uh, you're not yeah. using a flashlight. You can navigate pretty well in here. Yeah, well, I, I've been down here for a while, so I, I can actually navigate without a light pretty much. Steve can uh, see in the dark, almost. Steve leads us to the home he shares with his fiance, Catherine. Still wet down here. Yeah, man. This is amazing. Hi, how are you? How are you? Hi, I'm Lisa. Can we come in? They've worked hard to make it as homey as possible. This is our shower. It's pretty clever. Yeah. Works just fine. Getting a little privacy, you know, just put the curtain up. Steve says that like most tunnel dwellers, drugs landed him here. But Catherine threatened to leave him if he didn't quit. We fell in love and, you know, I mean, we want to get out of here. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's always our main goal. You know, we don't want to live like this forever. We don't like living in the tunnel. Um, we live here because, you know, it's, we can and we're not, we're not bothered by the, anybody, the police or anything like that, don't really know that we're down here. You know, it's a lot of out of sight, out of mind. Can you just turn off the light for a second? Because I just want to show how dark it is in here. Steve introduced us to some of their neighbors Hi. in the tunnel. They're a community. So this is your home, huh? This is my home. Yeah. Living next door is Phil. When we met him, he was reading Sports Illustrated, catching up on the latest scores. I, I bet sports or whatever with some of the money that I make, they're thinking that I'm going to hit it rich and you know get out of the situation. But everybody that comes to Vegas thinks the same thing I'm thinking. Is it weird that 
you kind of live in this world underneath. Yeah, Sin it was City. at first. It was at first, but now once I once I see the call, I have to say the culture we created really. Um, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's weird. I think it's. I think we were pretty smart to survive the way we did. They survive by feeding off the casinos they live below. There's lots of money in the casinos. Okay. How do you all do you it? Gotta, how do you, all you gotta do is keep your eyes open. They sleep during the day and venture out at night to do what's called credit hustling, scouring the slot machines to look for credits that tourists unwittingly have left behind. I don't mind taking money from those who live a life of decadence. Playing them can earn Catherine and Steve about 50 bucks a day, sometimes more just enough to live and maybe treat themselves to a movie once in a while. So Steve, you've lived here for two years. Catherine, you've lived here for one. How long do you expect you will continue to live here? Gosh, we'd like to be out here tomorrow if we could. Um, we're just we don't plan, you know, a month ahead of time or whatever. It's pretty much right now we're living day to day. We get up, we have to, uh, you know, survive. But above them, Sin City shines on. It's millions of visitors walking on top of this hidden world. For Nightline, I'm Lisa Ling, under the Vegas Strip.